In a previous video, we got a behind the scenes look at a digital online scam because a viewer who happened to be a WordPress hosting provider and administrator was willing to share some server side code, PHP, HTML, everything on the back end that anyone wouldn't be able to see unless they had access to the server, the computer, the device itself. And that was awesome enough as it is, but something even more incredible is that they sent us even more. Take a look at this email. No honor among thieves, they are signing their WordPress scripts to get credit. Hey, I came across a few interesting things lately when battling the WordPress phishing sites. I'd email you the full archive, but it looks like Gmail doesn't like me sending these. Hey, we gotta get this individual uh, spun up with some password protected archives. Zip files, seven zip, anything here. They say, one thing that caught my eye was the number of times people signed their script with their online handle. They could get credit for their work, even like adding a copyright option. And they list some commands that they run on the server for a Wells Fargo scheme, the pretense for another phishing lure and hook, couple of the files here, and even digging into some of the PHP that's present. So I've downloaded these and I've got them staged and stored in Remnux, my reverse engineering malware Linux distribution. I created a directory for us to take a look at these and I wanna show you those commands just as we saw. Here it's just simply listing, hey, what's on the server, a couple different PHP files. One thing that they were pointing out though was Spox. A little bit interesting, they hadn't seen that before. I don't know if that's meant to be the like sports streaming something or another, but of course, of course, there are a couple of other files, interestingly enough, within that Spox directory. A couple of anti files, functions, mail, Wells results, and config files, and we can dig into each of the ones that they were willing to send. I do want to take a look at that Spox config file that was present in that directory and take a look. Looks like a couple variables just being set here double login, double access, show question, email, credit card. Uh, I'm assuming these are meant to be like Boolean values, however, they are just set to the string of yes, that's odd. And then an email that, hey, okay, you could fill in for whatever email uh, I suppose the user of this script would want. I'm assuming this is some a cyber crime as a service where, hey, you can plug and play other code that other script kitties or threat actors, or whatever unsophisticated folks you wanted to, to create your own mal spam campaigns, your own phishing emails, so you can steal credentials and be a bad guy, bad person just like everyone else. I don't know what these redirection and API protection things are. There is a key listed here, presumably for an API key. It says, hey, don't change this, however. I don't know what this API is for. I haven't been able to track that down yet. And again, this isn't everything within these archives. He, they only sent me a couple files, but there are some other interesting ones in here. If we take a look more at the other Spox files, there is a Spox anti-bot spam here. And this is interesting because, okay, we get a little bit of those clues on, hey, the individuals that are willing to just kind of chest thump and claim, hey, this was our script. We wrote this. Taking, taking credit and even adding some silly copyright to it. Over on Telegram, Spock's coder, we can go take a look at that one. And uh, recording doesn't make you a coder. I don't know if that's a dig at me or not. <laughs> Take a look, this is a giant array, a whole big long list of just simple words that will be referring to bots. So online web crawlers, robots, things that might be looking through the internet to index things or cache things. Like you can see Google dot, Googlebot just here and a couple of the other ones like Baidu Spider or maybe LinkedIn, any of the things that might be out and about. And what they do is they actually go through and take, hey, the remote address that you're looking at one of these bots are present in the server remote address or the user agent, it uh, looks like that's just for logging purposes, it ends up saving it to a text file of bots.txt. So it's trying to archive, create, keep a list of all of the user agents that might be including any of those ones that it wants to avoid. And take a look, actually further down, they check, hey, all of these bot names that are defined up here in this big long list, again, if they are in the user agent, then they log this into their bots.txt file. And after they save this file, they respond, hey, 404, not found, exit. We're not gonna return a real page to you because you're a robot, because you're trying to find things, information that we don't want shared. They just say, go away, this page is not real, it's not found, and you aren't able to return the web page. If it's like a bot, like Python URL lib, or curl, or Googlebot, or any of the others. And actually, before we go too much further, I do wanna give some love to today's sponsor, Sneak. I'll be honest, I write bad code. Even though I try to hunt for vulnerabilities and lots of other software, I still have vulnerabilities even in my own projects. Everyone does. And that's why I use Sneak to scan for vulnerabilities in code, dependencies, containers, and configuration files. And Sneak helps find and fix those vulnerabilities in real time. You can try it and see for yourself. You can sign up for free with my link below 
import your repositories, and sit back and let Sneak do the work for you. It'll find the flaws and vulnerabilities in your own applications. Check out this prototype pollution vulnerability that Sneak uncovered. We can see more details about the code path that introduced this vulnerability, and even learn more about this kind of vulnerability or any others if you check out the Sneak Learn Lesson. I've referenced the Sneak Learn Lessons and their vulnerability database a ton, especially in assessments and penetration testing, and even during Capture the Flag competitions. From there, you can see an explanation of the flaw, proof of concept exploit code and attack demonstrations, and most importantly, how to mitigate this vulnerability. But the best part? Sneak helps you fix this vulnerability with a single click. It'll automatically open a pull request so you can just merge and move on. So seriously, check out Sneak. It's crazy how many vulnerabilities could be affecting your projects and you don't even realize. Take advantage of their resources and learning material and learn all about the different vulnerabilities out there. It's completely free and you can sign up right now with my link in the video description. Huge thanks to Sneak for sponsoring this video. This is a run.php script for the name and the individual who sent these all along, the WordPress hosting provider and administrator said this actually came from an AOL or a Yahoo phishing scam. And they grab, okay, the post requests for login and password, maybe this form here that would have presented to receive their credentials, getting the IP address that they retrieve and then getting some signals, okay, just arrays to determine if it's good or bad and then staging things inside of a file, determining whether or not they actually had credentials if the login or password are empty, and if they do, they end up sending an email. They end up staging, hey, we got a new login from this IP address from this better tools at Yandex RU, or at least to that address, right? Where it includes in the message, the username that was stolen, the password that was stolen from the IP address at this date. All created by our good friend Grills, with a Z, cause he's leaked, Cyber Ninja Warrior. And it just sends the email and it just responds, hey, returns on the web page with the encoding, hey, signal was bad, you weren't able to log in. All the while, they've stolen your credentials. Now we're gonna do some of the fun ones. I think these are the coolest because they're basically stuff that we got to chat about a little bit before here and there's a whole lot of runway here. This is cookies.php with our coder Simosaper11 or Simosaper, I don't know how to say your hacker name here, uh, but cookies are retrieved, of course, and you could fill out what would be your Telegram token or your Telegram chat ID. And these are all commented, which like is super duper handy. Thank you, uh, obvious, nefarious, malicious individual. And there's a function defined to go ahead and send a message where you build up the request parameters for HTTP and you go ahead and post to this request URL, which is, as you would expect, the API for Telegram with a bot and a Telegram token to send a message and then curl to make this request. It's, again, stealing whatever cookies it might end up tracking down and bundling all up and stealing it and sending it over here. Send a message for all the cookies with our Telegram token and you'll use Telegram to exfiltrate that sensitive information. I do want to dig into uh, Simo Saper. We're building out quite a list of some, uh, uh, maybe some threat actors and script kitties wanting to put their name on their homework here. <laughs> The thing is, that didn't have anything interesting because it was just the function. It was just building out the functionality, but our AOL.php is another one where you can get a little bit more interesting stuff here. Take a look. Hey, we've got our IP address pulling down. We're building out the message for our AOL update, so to speak, with the email that's provided, the password that's provided, and of course, the IP address on geoiptool.com. Then we end up sending this, creating our use.txt file where we kind of log all this just as well server side from whatever, but ultimately, here it is. Here is another Telegram bot with their uh, token, with the, with the bot ID, the chat ID and message space that they want to send this all to, and they do the exact same process, where they go ahead and use curl to send a message, have Telegram get all this data for us where they can look at it after the fact. Of course, hey, here's a simple stupid redirect to AOL's login, mail.aol.com. Now, normally that's the gist, that's everything because wow, okay, cool, we found our credential harvester, we're seeing we're leaking through email, we see we're exfiltrating through Telegram, but in the last couple of videos, you all were super duper smart and let me know in the comments, you know, sometimes there's a way where you could actually dig into what some of those Telegram bots are seeing. 
this is an email that came following that previous video where they mentioned, hey, if you wanted to use this URL, you could actually see from the API, noting the bot ID, you could try to get updates. You might be able to see, even just with get messages, maybe denoting the chat ID, you could pull down what messages are present there. Or if you wanted to, you could send messages and maybe spam the channel if you wanted to make a little bit more of a mess. Go a little gray hat, right? And they pulled this down again for the endpoint in the previous video. So let's get wild and let's take that link again from the previous video as an example where we could try to look at the Telegram bot records for that previous one. Now I'll hit enter here and it will return nothing. Uh, cause it looks like, okay, that one got cleaned up. That individual did note that and let me know, hey, it looks like the API got wiped. Maybe all the records in that channel have been removed, deleted, but they actually had a few records in the past, but we can dig into those in just a moment. Let's try this technique on our current newfound API token bot. This is again, our AOL.php and here is our bot presence here. Uh, let me see if I can just create a new page where I have this HTTPS link, but this will end up being modified, right? With the previous API and now let's go grab that bot's IP address. All that's token and everything that we need. Let's get back to our terminal and let's try and clear the screen to run this curl command. Let me add curl at the start of that. Um, but this returns unauthorized. So maybe this one is a little bit more locked down. I don't know, maybe they were a little bit smarter in putting this one together. I haven't had luck with that while the others had. And I'm curious again, if you wanna let me know some other super smart stuff in the comments. I think you could actually even just go to get where you specify like, oh, some other post data, uh, tag tag data or whatever. And you make like JSON where you can say, hey, the chat ID can actually reference uh, whatever the message channel was that we see in the source code here. That might be able to get you one message or you could loop through as many of those as you want to get just about everything. You could even have it like forward things to your Telegram account. All the crazy stuff uh, if you wanted to kind of snoop and listen in on this uh, for research, education, but I thought that would be worthwhile to show. Let's dig into some of the logs from the previous video where that individual, again, who had just emailed me and said, take a look at all the stuff that we tracked down. This is what the API used to return when you would run get updates for the token found in the previous video. Looks like it did have results. It had update IDs, it had bots that were present, uh, usernames that were included. <laughs> uh, our Khalifa, Khalifa666 bot, who is a bot and presumably the one, okay, reaching and linking all of these specific user credentials. Now note, I have gone through to try to redact the victim ID, the username, the user ID, their IP address, but you can see the entries in here that we saw, again, just previously in the last video, where they include some information, again, the user ID, username, password, IP address, and their location. Looks like just about all of these are from PY, uh, Paraguay, right? So let me see, can I actually pull these and let me bring this into, uh, what is it? Google Translate? All right, hopping over here to Google Translate. Um, university, account type, member number, redacted, redacted, uh, and their location, right? But if you'll notice, they include a, even just another bit of text here underneath that. Let me see if I can slap that in. Pasting that in, it says uh, bad key for that one. Okay, I'm curious if that's a note that like, oh, their password didn't work or something. Here we got another one. Let's see, this says, Mallow, I can end that in. Mallow, bad. Okay, another one bad, presumably. Scrolling down, this one has teen uh, that. Let me grab this and we can do it one more time. Teen one million. Uh, what the heck? <laughs> University account, savings account. Maria123 is the password, it has 1 million. Uh, and that's the note here, it has 1 million. I don't know if that's supposed to mean there's a million dollars in that account, uh, but that's still a spooky thing to see. But that is the output that you might see if you could pull down a response from one of the API Telegram bots uh, info and updates and messages that could be pulled down from that channel. Another individual showcase kind of a similar thing. Hey, they were reaching out saying, look, we're seeing the same sort of stuff. Uh, if you wanted to end up using get and then trying to loop through stuff, you very well could. And they were actually able to set up some of that forwarding that you can do with the Telegram bot messages. Apparently it was a deleted account, but you could see here's that Office 365 HTML logs at whatever time and date is given and user agent, probably the username, email, password, IP address, uh, and another, hey, maybe a potential uh, threat actor, we could probably go see what they're up to on the Telegram stuff. So at this point, we have a like whole list. Between all those folks here, it looks like we got Spox Coder. Uh, we can add that one to our list. We have, what was it, Grills? I don't know if we'll be able to track that 
on down on on Telegram, but the other one, Mr. Q, looks like it came from Telegram. Uh, what else did we have? We had Simo Saper, of course, of course. That looks like a channel to even join. They had a join message there, and I'm gonna assume those are our actors here. Between look, they literally put a flag in the ground. They try to write a little copyright, trying to make sure they can credit themselves in their code. Let's go see if Simo Saper is a friend. If you didn't know, you can go to uh, t.me with whatever Telegram I think username or channel, and it will just kind of get you the little setup there. Uh, and oh, this is okay. <laughs> Black Hat Egypt. We are Black Hat with the owner, Simo Saper 11, given that user. And let's go see what this thing's about. Taking a look within Telegram here. This is Black Hat Egypt. And it's a thing. It's... <laughs> okay. Messages from June 17th, relatively recently. I'm recording on the 19th here. Looks like uh, API check all numbers. Little uh, utility here. You can make your own Python script. This has 1,800, almost 1,900 subscribers present. Don't mind whatever chat I have over on my Telegram side. This is other, you know, cybercrime shenanigans. It's, it's whatever. Uh, new API privilege. Check all domains. Three million emails. Simple Twilo tester script. Okay, so just sharing code, just sharing uh, data leaks. Here's some Python script to... <laughs> <laughs> OS remove system 32, RM tech, RIF. Is the I even, I don't think that's... <laughs> what else do we have here? Here's some videos. Oh, some pictures. Oh, he's doing his thing. RDP'd into something there. Oh, oh, he's gonna make a course. He's gonna, he, he's jumping on the course bandwagon. Spamming course by Black Hat Egypt. What is spamming? What is scam page? What is scam? <laughs> oh, get an academy going. Here's a video here. F Society, we've got Elliot Alderson up in the. For my CEO, for my PO, oh, God, the music oh God, I had to turn the music off. That was horrendous. What is this? What is this video? He's got like an SMTP spammer. Is that what this thing is? Couple of hits. Oh goodness. For like targeted accounts. Is that like actually what's happening? Like, okay. Given a username or password. What is this? Grant, I, I don't know. Take it with a grain of salt, but I'd have to think. Okay. Logging in. Are these just all of the stolen credentials that have been ported into this Outlook email? This thing is called Silver Bullet. That was the name of the application that he either has or built or I don't know. It's 80,000 emails. Is he just logging in with like another? Oh, uh, oh no. Okay, I don't feel like I should be here. I don't, I don't want to watch this anymore. What do they do? I'm done. I'm out. I'm out. I'm out. Combo priv for crack dot text, uh, DMs, messages. I don't know. Making sales, selling deals, getting cybercrime up at the business. Emails available. How to install Python two with fixed pip and windows. No, oh, no, no, no. You should not be using Python two at this point. Come on. Subfinder syntax. Cpanel XSS. Okay. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Bot .php. Let me get that. Yeah, we can do that one because it's PHP. There's another API bot token just hanging out over there. This one looks a little bit bigger. Getting contents, SK Live, multi string explode, shout out. It just flat out does send message again with Telegram ID, user group, et cetera, commands. It's like building out a whole thing here. This is massive. Stripe payments in the API mix? This is massive. It's just AP, it's just a Stripe payments? Like trying to make that as a Telegram bot? Can we see anything from this bot token? Let's get this into here, uh, get updates, and let's try to do one more curl command on that. Not found. Oh, 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 I need to include the bot prefix. Can't get updates method while webhook is active. Use delete webhook, what? Can we get stuff from that? Where's the channel ID? Where's the channel ID? Uh, I don't see it in here. It's not included. It's not included in the bot. It's all just variables. They don't actually have it set. I mean, they have it set, but it's like from, I don't know if it's in here, but that one looks, unless it's like a user ID, but that wouldn't make sense to me. I thought it's supposed to be like the message ID or the channel ID. Wait, it's from update. An update is file get contents based off the input stream. Oh, so, oh, wow. Okay, so a little bit more flexibility there, huh? All right, I'm gonna leave that on alone. And there is so much stuff in here. Black Cat Egypt is the gift that keeps on giving, but we have three other things to chase. Let's go explore those before we forget. Can we find grills? He's a thing. 
I don't know if that's him. I don't know if that's our guy or his the three guys. One of maybe the three or two. Who knows? Spock's coder, however, we got to have a lead for. Because Spock's coder gave us... Oh, was that not his name? Was it Spock's DZ? That's supposed to be his telegram, right? What about Spock's DZ? Oh, he's a thing. Oh. <laughs> Attention, guys, I already told that Spock's Coder is no longer my account. It was my ID in 2019 and 2020, but I deleted my old Telegram account because someone chose that. That's right, I used to use my name on old scam pages I made before 2021, but now I am a new man. All right, well, I mean, that explains why this thing was like, what, copyright 2020? <laughs> For copyright? Spock's Coder is a fake one. Spock's Coder official is as real as it gets. He's official. This is from October 18, 2021. What is the latest stuff in here? June 16th. Okay, it's back in action over in the Spock's Coder official channel. What is this? Binary skull dot chase USPS scam page and letters. What is this? What is this world that I live in? Heart sender? <laughs> Just like the I love you virus, that'd be, that'd be ghetto. He has a store. You can, you can buy stuff. RDPs for sale. Hey, 60 gigs over in the US. $20? That's cheap. All right, we could go down a long rabbit hole here, but we got to move on to our friend, Mr. Q. I guess Spock's Coder official was still a thing though. Does that bring me to a completely separate one? Oh, that's him. That's, that's his real account. I follow. That's his username. Let's go take a look at uh, Mr. Q. Ah, oh, I don't speak this language. I don't know what I'm gonna find here. And I'm sketched out. Can I like Google translate some of these? No, I don't wanna forward them, get out of my, ah. Um, what is this? What is this? What is this place that I'm in? Oh God. Oh, God. I'm still scrolling up. Why? <laughs> Could I copy and paste these? Do they go in Google Translate? Oh, come on, Google. I am not a robot, stop. Okay, 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 we're back in Google Translate. Third grade, chemistry. God willing, the questions will be easy and all of them will pass. Third grade chemistry, is that the username? I'm done, I'm out, I'm out, nothing else. Nothing for us to dig into further here. <laughs> Hey, thanks so much for hanging out, everyone. That was a little bit of a wild ride. I hope you had fun. Uh, some wild and crazy stuff, weird things to see, weird things to dig into and play with. Um, but man, uh, I don't know, it was cool to get, again, that inside look, like the inside perspective for what some of the scam pages are looking like, what even the whole scam campaigns and this whole cybercrime info stealer thing as a business really, really is. It's a spooky thing. Hey, thanks again. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like, comment, subscribe. Please do check out our sponsor, Sneak, in the description. And I hope to see you in the next video video. Why is it so slow? Oh my God. Okay. Get out of my life.